majority of us northerners against them. But now we are still people are still telling us don't trust Inyamiri to be president. But we can keep circulating it among us northerners. Then once upon once a, in a while, because we've got the West Southwest that always play the game of the northerners for what they will get. And they become the sellout. They work against the Southeast for their own personal greedy interest. And so that's why I am saying this time around, we must forget those things and stand as one Nigeria in defense of our nation. All right. Um, you mentioned um, when he said that he was, um, if anybody bothers him, he will go to the Niger Republic and, and, and stay there. He also said that recently that Niger will defend him if someone troubles him in Nigeria. Help us understand what does he mean by that? Will so, Republic can you say that, that what will happen? He said that Niger Republic will defend him if anybody troubles him in Nigeria. What, what does he mean by that? Is the country capable of taking on Nigeria if anything happens to Buhari? Okay. I think Buhari just told you how he failed Nigerians. Nigeria before could go and fight with Ekomok, you know, bring peace in different West African nations. And Nigerians even went beyond West Africa to help other nations. But this time around, we can't even face terrorists in a forest, Rudolf. So that's why he was busy empowering Niger. Only God knows what Buhari is busy planning. So, and I think even from those utterances, DSS must go after him and find out, because if you and I make such a statement, well, they want to find out, why are you saying that? That a nation will defend you. Where has that ever happened, Rudolph? So, and let me tell you, they are, they are behind every smoke there's a fire. What is what has Buhari done? Has he taken some of, of, of our military distinct might across border? If that's what he has done, let's check. I think this is an intelligent something that is it has some, some security connotation to it that we must check. If you are talking about Niger, whether it's a joke, you don't joke with such things to say. If there is trouble, Niger will defend. He's basically staying, saying, I have destroyed your military. I've destroyed your capacity to be able to protect yourself and defend yourself. A nation as small, as weak as uh, Niger can overpower you. The same way Boko Haram allowed them to overpower you. The same way kidnappers are now in control. And only we just have ceremonial so-called, you know, whatever he has put there in the police or whatever. They are all his brothers. It's all about siphoning money, stealing, and killing people. Now, so um, Buhari, we need to go after him. He shouldn't go free. From tomorrow, he is not going to be president of Nigeria. And he shouldn't just be allowed to go quiet. Especially because of those utterances he has made. Rudolph, those are, they've got deep implications. All right, uh, Harun, let me, let me take you uh, to 2015. Insecurity in Nigeria was basically, um, especially in the north, was on the northeastern side. But eight years after, Niger, Castina, Kaduna, virtually everywhere in the, in the northwest, it's, it's not secure anymore. Um, but Buhari still has support from regular people when he travels to these places. What is going on that we don't understand? Why is it that there are still people who who are victims of this, his um, government, that are still supporting him and hailing him? What is going on here? Okay, one thing you have to know, uh, Rudolph and everybody that's watching, the way, especially if you're talking about wherever he goes, mostly, it will be northerners or other state, uh, other nations that are predominantly Muslim. And I'm not trying to be partisan here, but I'm just saying generally because the belief with us generally is that even if your brother is a murderer, he's your brother. Even if your brother is an armed robber, he's your brother. 
If you are to stand in defense of Nigeria and your brother that's destroying Nigeria, stand with your brother and let Nigeria be in flames. And that's why you will find this thing, the moment somebody say, don't touch him, he's our brother, he's our brother, then you forgive his sins. So that's why. And then the other reason is because a lot of people that are following him, they don't really believe because you can see the common man, the way they treat him in Dora, where he comes from, why his uh, motorcade will be attacked. They are throwing stones. Why they would jump on top of the, the billboard and be pulling them down and saying, Bamuso, Bamuso. That means we, we, we don't want, we don't want. We don't want you. That is where he comes from, Dora in Katsina State. So that the real, I mean, the people on the grassroots that are tired, they've suffered so much, you will not see them. They are the ones that sometimes throw stones. But before he comes, they have to protect everywhere so that there is no embarrassment for the, the commander in chief. So the and some others that are paying homage and singing his praise, they are people just like. FFK, those are the opportunities. The ones that will, the, the, wherever the thing goes, they will go as long as they can keep eating. And the current one that they are preparing to swear in is a, a group of ropes that are aligned together, waiting to eat with a man that knows how to empower crooks. And that's why, so if somebody's saying, if I'm saying, hey, Rudolph, you're a great man, there's nobody like you. Maybe, and I'm saying, you know, since you went to America, the world has changed. Maybe I'm planning to visit America and give you a call so you can give me accommodation. People don't just sing praise for nothing. They, most of the time, is because they are gaining in the evil system. And then, in other, uh, other things that happen is that they hire crowds. They are not organic. They prepare people before they come so that there are no embarrassment. All right. We'll go back uh, into the, the politics and uh, the legacy of uh, Buhari. But let's uh, move on to what will happen tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow will be the inauguration of uh, uh, Bola Tinubu as the president of Nigeria. Um, let, me, let me play this video of... Uh, you know, we've been shown around at Asso Rock, uh, inside Asso Rock, just uh, 15 seconds of this. All right, the video didn't, there, there's no audio, so... Um, but in the video, what we saw was um, he almost, um, he's not very, very strong. Uh, we've known that in terms of health. Um, there's an article on BBC website where they wrote about the five challenges, immediate challenges that he's going to face. The first one is um, oil subsidy. Uh, the second one is um, it's about insecurity, kidnapping, which you've mentioned. Uh, they mentioned his health as one of the challenges he, he's going to face. Um, where will you be tomorrow? Will you watch? Will you watch the event happening in Abuja tomorrow? No, uh, we. Uh, I don't know how to answer that concerning watching the event, because the event that's happening tomorrow is an illegal event. Event. So I don't believe that that should have happened. I've been calling on the president calling on the judiciary to stop it. Because let me read something uh, to you. I, I want to just pull out something here and read. The inauguration I mean, that's happening, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that's now according to the constitution, shall not be governed, nor shall any person or group of persons take control of the government of Nigeria or any part thereof, except in accordance with the provision of the constitution. Nigeria shall not be governed by the, uh, by the provision, I mean, Nigeria shall be governed by the provision of this constitution. Section 14, two says, it gives 
sovereignty to us as Nigerians. So because you know, some people are in the south, in the east, and the west, so not everybody will be in Abuja. But it gives us, Nigerians, the sovereignty to us as citizens through the constitution. And we have an, an, an inalienable right to ensure that the constitution is upheld and protected. So as far as I'm concerned, what they are doing tomorrow is installing somebody. It's almost like installing a, mili some, a military takeover, but now in civilian clothes. Why? Because when you check what, they, what, what should qualify somebody to be pres declared president elect and then sworn in, the person should have gotten at least I mean, we know about the 24 states, and then, and, and it's, you know, when I say Rudolph and Haruda must be in the meeting before the meeting starts. Rudolph cannot just come in and say, and the way I interpret and, and means Haruna can stay away as long as I tell him about the meeting. It says, until Rudolph and Haruna are present in the meeting. So a person that will be sworn in as president has to also get, that means you get the other 24 states, but you must also get this one. So, but now what are they doing? They have gone to try and interpret it because since we say that the, the, uh, after the elections and then it's been declared, if you want, you have any issue, go to court. And whatever the Supreme Court says is final. So basically, what have they done? They have empowered the same guy that uh, Mahmoud Yakubu kept promising that the, this is how the election will be. It will be credible. We can lay aside the one of President uh, 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 Buhari because he is, is not in the Electoral Commission. But the one that was directly the chairman told us that everything will be happening live and all these things were not followed. Then now the people are asking, can you check this check that before you go ahead and declare? He went ahead and swapped in and declared him when people were sleeping. So as people are challenging now, when they say go to court, they are challenging and they will not let it go through. So I want to ask you, Rudolph, or anybody watching, Let's say you have stolen my stuff. I found you with the stolen property. And it's mine. I have received to prove I bought this product. Then you tell me I'm going away with it. Let's meet in court. Then you go with the thing. You are driving the car around. Or you are eating the food. You have finished the food. We must meet in court after you've eaten my stolen food. So what's happening tomorrow is trying to force somebody who kept saying, Emmy Lokon. So when I'm going to be president one day, I have it in my record that I was president. But I'm telling you, most Nigerians, even Northerners, have not accepted Tinubu. And let me tell you, what's happening tomorrow is like placeholding. They are preparing it for somebody else, not even for that dying man. Because you can see he's sick. I don't wish him to die, but I'm saying it's too obvious. And Nigeria is too tough, too complex to have a frail man that is more abroad dispensing himself, getting energized to come and face us. And then they're doing that tomorrow. I don't believe in what is happening tomorrow. And most Nigerians don't believe. And I'm not going to go there and watch and see. If I was to go there, I'm just going there to, to say it. They should stop it. All right. So for obedience who are not sure how to react to what will happen tomorrow, what I what, what are you saying to them? Because there are some people who are saying that we are not going to accept him as our president. We are going to protest. We are going to resist. There are people who are saying that um, people should move on. What are you going to say to the obedience? who are looking at the situation and they don't know how to react. For me, I would say to the obedience, remain obedient to the cause. Don't you retreat. The battle 
to take Nigeria back from these wicked politicians is not an easy one. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. But it, there is still possibility for a win. One thing we need to know is that numbers speak. Numbers speak. I think people are despising the, despising the power of numbers. I just read parts of the Constitution that gave the right not to the few people that were selected or paid money. We saw what happened in Adamawa. Is it because it is a clear case didn't come out for us to see what was happening with uh, Mahmoud Yakobo that people think, oh no, people are just speculating. What is speculating? Why is the nation not celebrating? Even the so-called concert that people did there, it's just people that were paid money and it's to the highest bid that they go there and they're dancing with their sorrows away. They say, at least if I won't get my candidate, my the one my, I voted for won't be there, let me go and chop the money. So because they, they believe that they will be there, they will be a movement, they don't, we know they collect shishi, we know they give shishi, they say, ah, those ones are money they speak of. Even when they brought her uh, as a, uh, 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 is it uh, Asari, is it Dubo, Dubo, Duboko or whatever from, they, they hired, we interviewed some of them that came. You can see these were touts, these were thugs that were just picked, that they know terrorized people, they paid them money. Some said they gave me 30,000, some would say 70,000, and they told me, just come, we want the numbers so that we can stop those people that want to protest. My call to the obedience is that if you run now, you will always be running. If you quit now, you'll be a quitter. So did you start this race going after this established evil politician, thinking it was going to be a ride in the park? My life is more in danger than yours. As a northerner, I've come up against the flow. I've come up against the, the current putting my life on the line. I'm receiving threats from people. What you are doing, stop it, stop it. But I'm saying my life is worth nothing because Nigerians are dying every day. Since we started this program, people have died, people have been kidnapped. People have died of accident because of bad roads that they gave in contract for and they ate up the money. See, you know how much a governor takes home and then he still has to be collecting his full salary with houses built every so so year with new cars and crew uh, cooks i almost said crooks cooks i mean they have everything that's why people would do everything to go into parliament to, to the to the house of assembly to to go to the senate after finishing their eight time or four time as a governor they will still want to go and they can kill and so my call to the obedience is that the fight just started. I am 67 years old. Some of you are 21. Some of you are 31. You are still young. If you relate and you turn back and say, let me go back and play soccer. Let me just Japan and go abroad. It's your nation. You go outside, you will be an economic refugee. People will mistreat you. So don't think the grass is greener abroad. I shot you in between Nigeria and other nations. And I know how it is. Nigeria is a blessed nation. We have so much potential for greatness to be a first world. Our only challenge is that we have sat aloof, fear of dying. And so many people, they're calling you, come out, let's protest. Who can resist when a million young people come out to Abuja? Will they kill all of you? How many police are there? How many soldiers are there? But people are scared. You say, come. Then they say, okay, hey, Haruna, you are calling us to come. Come with your children and be in the forefront. Is it a matter of me leading you or you leading for your own destiny, for your own future? So what is my call? I'm saying it's not over. The journey and the fight just began. Every obedient, not only obedient, Nigerians should take a stand in defense of true democracy, in defense of their rights. And if you know you did not vote for Tinubu, then Tinubu cannot be your president if you know. 
let you know what Rudolph let allow the court but I pray that the courts will not be bribed by these evil politicians. Everything for Tinubu is money. Let's talk about the courts, you know, because on Friday, uh, the Supreme Court ruled in the case against uh, Shetima, PDP's case against Shetima. They ruled, um, they basically dismissed it. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, I, I knew it was coming because we had, you know, information that I won't divulge here, but some of these things will come out soon on what was done. The thing was already decided before the court date. Meetings were done, some abroad, some in Nigeria, and they already finished the case before they entered the court. And, and so that's been the game for years. The Nigerian judiciary has been compromised. We are only praying that they have a heart 